Hello friends, my name is Tushar and today I'm going to talk about segment tree. Before even going into the details of segment tree, let's see what use cases segment tree is trying to solve. So segment tree helps with range query in an array. Examples of range query is, what is the minimum from two to four in this array? And that's zero. What is the minimum from zero to three in this array? And that's minus one. Other examples are what is the maximum in certain range? What is the sum in certain range? So these are the questions which uh, segment tree answers pretty quickly. Let's see if we did not use segment tree, what are the other, other alternative ways to answer these questions? So I could as very well just traverse through this array and say the minimum from zero to three is minus one and return minus one. And that works fine. But what if there are millions of queries in this array? So the total time for that would be m, n, where m is the number of queries and n is the size of this array. And this might not scale very well if m and n are really large numbers. Let's look at another alternative approach. So if my array was three minus one, two, I could build a two cross, a three cross three matrix and fill up this matrix. So from zero to zero, my minimum is three. From zero to one, my minimum is minus one. From zero to two, my minimum is minus one. Similarly, from one to one, my minimum is minus one. From one to two, my minimum is minus one. And from two to two, my minimum is two. So once you have this uh, matrix built, you can easily answer the question, what is the minimum from zero to two and that's uh, you just go to zero to two and that's minus one what is the minimum from one to two and you go to one to two and that's minus one so it answers the query in o of one time but it takes o of n square time to build this matrix and it takes o of n square time to maintain this mat o of n square space to maintain this matrix and if n is a really big number this does not scale very well as well so this is where segment tree comes into the picture. It takes O of n time to build segment tree. It takes O of n space to maintain a segment tree and it answers the query in O of log n time. So next, let's look at how segment tree works. So what is segment tree? A segment tree is a binary tree and the element of this array will be the leaf of that binary tree. Let's see how this works. So these elements are the leaf of my binary tree. So I'll write them at the bottom. So minus one, three, four, zero, two, one. Minimum of minus one and three is minus one. Minimum of minus one and four is minus one. Minimum of zero and two is zero. Minimum of zero and one is zero. And then the minimum of minus one and zero is minus one. How did I create this tree? What I did was I split this array into two halves. So minus one, three and four on one side and zero, two and one on the other side. So my left half is minus one, three and four and my right half is zero, two and one. I again split this into another half. So minus one, three on the left of this minus one. So that's minus one and three. And since four is the only element left, it's right here. Similarly, on the other side, I split this into zero and two and one. So zero and two came here and then one is at a level above them. So finally, when I have this leaf set, all I did was found the minimum of minus one and three, which is minus one, then minimum here. And similarly, all the way to the top. So what happened was minus one is the minimum of my entire range. So zero to five. This minus one here is indicating I'm the minimum of range zero to two. This minus one here is indicating it's a minimum of three to five. This zero is indicating it's a minimum of three to five. This minus one is a minimum of zero to one. This four is a minimum of two cross two comma two. This is minimum of zero comma zero. This is minimum of one comma one. This is minimum of three comma four. This is minimum of five comma five. This is minimum of three comma three. And this is minimum of four comma four. All right, now let's do a range query on this, uh, on this uh, tree. 
So say I was looking for range 2 comma 4. So what I'm saying is what is the minimum from 2 to 4 in this array? And we'll find that answer using this tree. There are three rules which we need to be uh, looking for. One is partial overlap. Second is total overlap of intervals and third is no overlap. So we are talking about overlap of this interval and these intervals. So when there is a partial overlap of this interval with this interval, what I'm saying is I'm going to look on both the sides. If there's a total overlap, it means that if this interval totally overlaps this interval, so this interval is inside this interval, then I'm going to stop. And if there is no overlap, then also I'm going to stop. Let's see how this works. So 0 to 5 and 2 to 4. So 2 to 4 does not completely overlap 0 to 5. 0 to 5 overlapping 2 to 4 is not important. What is important is 2 to 4 does not totally overlap 0 to 5. So there's a partial overlap. So we are going to look in both the directions. So we come here. 2 to 4 also again is a partial overlap on 0 to 2. So we go on this side here. 0 to 1 does not at all overlap with 2 to 4. So this is not going to contribute to my answer. So I'm going to return a really big number from here, max. Let's come here. 2 to 2 totally overlaps under 2 to 4. So this returns me 4. So a minimum of max and 4 is 4. So this half returned me 4. Now I'm going to look on the uh, inside on the other half. 3 to 5 and 2 to 4 have a partial overlap. So again, I look on both the directions. 3 to 4 is totally under 2 to 4. So 2 to 4 totally overlaps 3 to 4. So this returns 0 right here. And 5 to 5, 5 comma 5 does not at all overlap here. So we return a max here. So 0 and max is uh, 0. Minimum of 0 and max is 0. And then the minimum of 0 to 4 is 0. So I'm saying 0 is a minimum from 2 to 4, which is correct. 2, 4, 0, 2. The minimum from 2 to 4 is 0. Again, if there's a partial overlap, you look in both the directions. If there's a total overlap, it means this interval totally overlaps these intervals. Then you stop there and return the value at that node. And if there is no overlap, you again stop and return a really big number if you are trying for a min, a min uh, range query. Let's try for another range. So now I'm going to try to find the minimum in range 0 to 4 for this array. So again, remember our rules of overlapping. If there's a partial overlap, which means that these intervals overlap, but this interval is not inside this interval, then we look in both left and right of this, this root. If there is a total overlap, which means this interval totally falls under this interval, but then we stop right there and return the value at that node. And if there is no, interval, no overlap, then again we stop right there and return a really big number. Let's try with this example. So I'm searching for minimum in 0 to 4, and this is my tree. So 0 to 5 does not totally fall under 0 to 4. So there is a partial overlap, so we search in both directions. So we come here, 0 to 2. 0 to 2 totally falls under 0 to 4. So this returns minus 1 right here. So we know that from 0 to 2, I've already calculated that minus 1 is the smallest number. Then I go on the right side, 3 to 5 and 0 to 4 overlap with each other. So there's a partial overlap. So I go on both left and right. 3 to 4 totally overlaps from on 0 to, uh, 0 to 4. So this returns 0 right here. And I know that from range 3 to 4, the minimum is 0. And on this other side, 5 to 5 does not at all overlap with 0 to 4. So I return a max here, a really big number. So minimum from 0 to max is 0. So this returns 0 from in this from here. So this returns minus 1 from here and this returns 0 from here. So the minimum of minus 1 and 0 is minus 1, which is the answer. So I'm saying is minus 1 is the minimum from 0 to 4 and that is the correct answer. Again, it looks like uh, we are searching the entire tree, but in reality, if you work out some other examples, you will see that at max, 
you will go in four different depths. So in worst case, the time for this algorithm will be four of log n, which is as good as O of log n. Next, let's look at how we create this segment tree using arrays. So now let's look at how we are going to represent this uh, segment tree. I have an array of length four. So the segment tree for this array will be minus one, zero, three, six. These are my leaves. Minimum of minus one and zero is minus one. Minimum of three and C six is three. And then the minimum of minus one and three is minus one. So as you can see, to represent an array of length four, it took me seven elements to uh, create the segment tree out of it. So if my array length is a power of two, if my array length is a power of true, which is true in this case because my array length is four, then the size of my segment tree will be four into two minus one, so that is seven, which is right here. If the length of my array is not a power of two, for example, five, I would find the next power of two, which is eight, and then multiply it by two and then subtract one, so that would be 15. So 15 would be the length of my array if my length of, length of my uh, segment tree if my original length of the array was five. In this case, the original length of our array is four, so the size of the segment tree will be seven. And let's number them. Now I'm going to represent this tree in an another array. So 0 is minus 1, then this 1 is minus 1, this 2 is 3, this, um, is, this 3 is minus 1, this 4 is 0, this is 3 and 6. To get my left child, I use the formula 2i plus 1, and to get my right child, I use the formula 2i plus 2, and to get the parent, I use the formula i minus 1 by 2. So, for example, if you want to get 0's child, left child will be... so. You, 1 and 2, you replace 0 in i, so 2 into 0 plus 1, so that's 1, and 2 into 0 plus 2 is that's 2. So 0's left child is 1, and 0's right child is 2. Let's see for 2. 2's left child is 2 into 2 plus 1, so that's 5. So 2's left child is 5, and 2's right child is uh, 2 into 2 plus uh, 2, so that's 6. So 2's right child is 6. And to get the parent, for example, if you want to get a parent of 4, so you'll say 4 minus 1 by 2, so that's 1. So 4's parent is 1. So this representation is nothing special to segment tree. There are many other algorithms like heap sort and others which use this representation of tree in array. So this is our conceptual tree and physically we are going to store it in an array. The total size of this array in the worst case will be 4 of 4n. So our space complexity is O of n. Also, the total time to build this array in the worst case will be 4 of n. So the, our time complexity to build this array is also O of n. In the next section, let's look at the code to actually create this array of segment tree from the original array. And also let's look at the code to do a range query in this original array. So let's quickly summarize what we discussed till now. We looked at the use case of a segment tree, which is to do a range query in an array. Then we talked about how if you are given a conceptual segment tree, you can do a range query in that conceptual segment tree. Then we talked about how segment tree is really represented using an array and not a binary, a binary tree. Then we talked about the runtime complexity of uh, constructing the segment tree, which is O of n. The space complexity is O of n. And searching into the segment tree is O of log n. If you did not understand any of those concepts, I would say that go back and watch this video again. Otherwise, let's look at how if you're given an input array, you will create a segment tree based off another array. So this, let's look at the structure of this code. The name of the function is construct tree. It's a recursive function. It takes input array, which is this array, and then it also takes a segment tree array. I have pre-initialized my segment tree array with really, really big number. And the length of the segment tree array depends on the length of my input array. If my length of my input array is a power of 2, then I just multiply that with 2 and subtract 1. Otherwise, I get the next power of true 2, multiply that with 2 and subtract 1. In this case, length of my input array is 4, 
which is a power of 2 so I multiply that with 2 so that's 8 and then subtract 1 so that's 7 so the length of my segment 3 is 7 low is 0 of uh, low of my input array high is 3 which is high of my input array and position is 0 0 position indicates the root of my segment 3 when binary tree is represented in an array 0 indicates the root of that binary tree now let's run this code on this example and create the segment tree so low is 0 high is 3 position is 0 position again is the root of my segment tree mid low is not same as high so I calculate mid mid is uh, 0 plus 3 by uh, 2 so that's 1 and then I'm indicating that I'm going into the recursion from line number 1 so when I went to the recursion from line number 1 I passed it low which is 0 and then I passed mid which is 1 and then I passed 2 into position plus 1 now remember 2 into position plus 1 is the left child so from 0 I'm passing 0 is left child so 2 into position so 0 2 into 0 plus 1 so that's 1 and now mid low is again low is not same as high so I, rec I calculate mid mid is uh, 0 and then I go into recursion again this time I'm passing it low which is 0 mid which is 0 2 into position plus 1 so 2 into 1 so 1's left child 1's left child is 3 2 into 1 plus uh, 2 into 1 plus uh, 2 into 1 plus 1 so that's 3 and this time low is same as high so segment 3 position is equal to input low input low input 0 is minus 1 segment 3 position so position is 3 so segment 3 3 is equal to minus 1 so you see how minus 1 got into its correct position then we just return so then we execute the line number 2 of my previous recursion and then I pass mid plus 1 so that's uh, 1 and high so that's 1 and 2 into position plus 2 position is 1 so 2 into 1 plus 2 so that's 4 to the calling to the called function again low is high so segment 3 position is equal to input low input low in this case is 2 and seg position is 4 so in here I get it 2 again 2 is in its final position so then we come back from the recursion so we return then we come back from the recursion segment 3 position is equal to minimum of left or right so we are trying to fill up this position 1 1 is minimum of left or right position is 1 so so this this uh, causes 1 which is my minimum of this or 2 so minus 1 so we update we updated position 1 of this segment 3 again we go back to the recursion to the calling function and then we executed line number 2 so basically we have built this side of the this half of the binary tree and now we are trying to build this half of the binary tree so uh, we go here we execute recursion from line number 2 so mid plus 1 so mid is 1 so 2 high is 3 2 into position plus 2 so position is 1 so 2 into 1 plus 2 so that's 4 po sorry position is 0 so 2 into position plus 2 so that's 2 so again I come here high is not same as low so I can recalculate mid mid is equal to 2 plus uh, 1 by uh, 2 plus 3 by 2 so that's uh, 2 again I go into recursion from line number 1 again when I go into the recursion I pass low as 2 high as mid so that's 2 position is equal to 2 into position plus 1 so that's 5 so that's left child 5 is the left child of 2 and then this time low is same as high so segment 3 position so segment 3 5 is equal to input low input low is uh, 4 input of 2 is 4 so 4 is in its is in its final position then we come back into from the recursion execute line number 2 line number 2 is mid plus 1 so that's 3 high is 3 and then 2 into position plus 2 position is 2 so 6 
Again, low is same as high. So segment 3, 6 is whatever is input low. Low is 3, so input low is 0. So segment 3, 6 is 0. So as you can see, all the leaves are now set. So again, we go back into the recursion. So we are in this line here now. So segment 3 position, position is 2 now. So now we are going to try to set this value. So it's going to look at what is the minimum of 4 and 0. So this is looking at minimum of 4 left child or right child. So this is uh, 0. Minimum of uh, 5 or 6. So then we are done executing this, this, uh, fun this particular call. And we go back to the calling function. And finally it does its, uh, finally it sets the root. So segment 3 position, so segment 3 root is minimum of left or right. So that's minus 1. And finally this is also done. So when this function returns, my segment 3 array is populated in this way, which is exactly representing my original conceptual tree. The time to construct this array again is O of n. And the size of this tree is again going to be O of n because in worst case the size of this tree is going to be four times the size of the original uh, original array. So it so four of n is as good as O of n. Next, let's look at how we do a range query in this segment tree. So finally, let's look at how we'll use this segment tree to do a range query search on the array. So what I'm saying is give me the minimum from one to three in my original array. So let's look at this code. It's a recursive function. The name of the function is range minimum query. It takes this array as a segment tree. Q low is one and Q high is three. This is the range on which I'm going to query. Low and high is zero and three and position is zero. Position again is going to show me the root of my binary tree when we are representing it as an array. So zero is my root of my binary tree starting from right here. As you can see that we don't need the original array anymore since we have already created a, an array of segment tree and we are going to use this to find our answer. So remember our rules from yesterday. If there is a total overlap, return the value at the node. If there is no overlap, return a max value. Otherwise, look into both left and right. So let's search for, uh, let's search for the minimum from one to three. So query low is one, query high is three, low is zero, high is uh, three, position is zero, so now uh, 1, 3 and 0, 3 do not have a total overlap. They have a partial overlap. So we don't go into this if condition. We don't go into this if condition. We come here. Mid is equal to low plus high, uh, low plus high by 2. So mid is equal to 0 plus 3 by 2. So that's 1. Then we go into the recursion from line number 1. Basically from here we are going in this direction. And from here we are going into uh, this guy. So we, we went into recursion with uh, 1, 3, same. Low is 0, uh, high is mid, so mid is 1. Position is equal to 2 into position plus 1, so that's 1. So we've jumped here or we jumped here. And again, it doesn't go into this, this if condition. It doesn't go into this if condition because there's a partial overlap between 1, 3 and 0, 1. So it comes here. So mid is equal to low plus high by 2. So mid this time is zero. And again, we go into the recursion. So we go into the recursion with one, three as my original thing, zero, zero. This time, there is no overlap between zero, zero and one, three. So basically what I'm saying is we, we reached this point. This does not have an overlap with one to, uh, what we are looking for, one to three. So this returns a really big number, max. So this returns a, really big number uh, to the calling function. So this returns a max to the calling function. So we go back into the recursion and execute line number two. Line number two of this, uh, this function call. So line number two is again, one three is my query, mid plus one, so mid is zero, so one, and high is one, and position is between two into position plus two, so two into 1 plus 2, so that's 4. All right, so basically we are going here, and, and here we are going to its right tail, so that's 4. 
So we go into the recursion. This time there's a total overlap from 1 to 3 and 1 to 1. So we return the value at that position. So we return the value at 4 and we return the value at 4. So this returns 4. So then here in the calling function, back at here, what, what we are saying is what is the minimum of a max or of a really big number which is this guy returned and 4. So that's 4. So this guy returns 4 to its calling function. So this returns 4 to this guy. So finally, uh, we are done looking on one side of a tree. So now let's look at the other side. Let's execute line number two for this recursion. So let's look at the other side of the tree. So here we are going to execute line number two. So here again we pass one, three. Mid plus one is two, three. And uh, position is two into position plus two. So that's two. And uh, mid is, uh, let's see if we need to calculate mid or not. So here there is a total overlap from 1 to 3 to 2 to 3. It means that it's going to return the value at that position. So it's going to return the value at here. So this guy is going to return value stored right here which was 0. Or value stored right here which was 0. So this is getting 0 from its left child. So then we come back here again in the, in the recursion and we get the minimum of 4 or 0 and that's uh, and that's 0 so we return 0 to the calling function so this function returns 0 and that is the minimum from 1 to 3 so as you can see this code gives us the minimum which we were looking for using this segment tree again the runtime for this algorithm is O of log n it seems like we are looking all over the tree but if you work on a bigger example you'll see that the worst case the, it looks in four different directions so the worst case time is 4 of log n, which is O of log n. If you want the solution for this code for searching into the range query and creation of a segment tree, you can look at, you can go to my descri description of this video to find the link. And if you want similar questions, go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com user to 2525 And you can also visit my GitHub link, github.com uh, mission piece interview wiki. Thanks for watching this video.